when you make a super heterodyne shortwave radio you need an IF amplifier. All the frequencies on say shortwave say 6 MHz, 10 MHz are say uh, translated into the IF frequency and on that IF frequency the whole information that was originally on that uh, shortwave uh, radio station uh, is still there and you can detect it. And in this video I want to uh, show how you can um, test the, an IF ceramic filter on its bandwidth. You can find these filters in say remote controls and in all kinds of other say consumer um, uh, apparatus and uh, of course it's important that you know when you make that shortwave radio what the bandwidth is how broad that filter has its bandwidth and where its peak is and you see some this one for both of them for 44 432 uh, uh, kilo cycles and this one for 455 kilo cycles I made a test setup this is the first stage of the IF amplifier IF amplifier that I'm going to make it will work with such a crystal you can see it here on four six eight kilo cycles and of course I have to know what the bandwidth is of that uh, crystal or ceramic uh, filter I use uh, both the word ceramic and crystal because there are some similarities anyway um, the whole setup is here the test oscillator we sent the uh, the frequency in the frequency band where that IF filter has to work into this stage that's in fact um, an uh, amplifier made with a BF199 here are the pin connections the bias of the amplifier is set with this um, potentiometer and at the output of that amplifier stage we have that crystal that we want to test and here it is four six eight kilo cycles whole setup is here the crystal uh, the BF transistor here the bias potentiometer here now in the middle of the screen here the test oscillator that gives out a frequency around the frequency for which the filter was made and when we say tune the test oscillator uh, say uh, 10 or 20 kilohertz and 10 or 20 kilohertz higher than the central freak lower and higher than the central frequency for which that filter was made you can see that on the scope you can see where the peak is you could also see where that filter uh, say um, has its maximum peak and where is the minimum peak on one side on the low side of the frequency for for which it was made and on the high side and in general that's 10 um, uh, kilo cycles for these types of filters anyway there are of course uh, smaller bandwidth filters on the market so it's that's why I tell here say this is a 10 kilo cycle bandwidth filter but in fact I have to test it so here is the test oscillator and we're looking now on the frequency of 461 um, kilo cycles and you can see that on that frequency the output 
of that first transistor stage on that frequency is not very high. So I'm going to tune in now here with the help of this filter that's approximately on the same bandwidth and a parallel capacitor that's here under side. I cannot show it otherwise the whole circuit falls apart. There's a tuning capacitor so in fact we are looking here this part the coil and the capacitor here tuning around 460 up to 470 kilocycles. The tuning capacitor is here, the coil is here and when we do that we can see where the filter peaks. So I'm going to slowly change the frequency of the testosterone. You can see that the energy level goes up that means that we are going, we are moving to say the central frequency of that, that ceramic filter. Here it is at its max. And we read 4, 6, 8 kilocycles. When we look at the filter itself, it is 4, 6, 8 kilocycles. So that's good. There's the maximum peak. Uh, it has its sharpest peak there. And you can also see how that uh, band filter, that ceramic filter, uh, how it falls off on the high frequency side and on the low frequency side. And if we now go to higher frequencies, it falls off. So 470, uh, the output is diminished. And when we go to the maximum peak here again, then we go to the lower side, lower frequencies, and it falls off, say, on, well, approximately here, 460 uh, kilo cycles, and on the higher side, approximately 470 kilocycles. That gives you a good indication of the bandwidth. And I um, made the, the tank circuit to drive the oscillator frequency into the transistor in such a way that uh, um, I could not vary too much on the high side of that filter, but anyway. Where you have a proper tuning capacitor that turns, say, 20 kilo cycles or 30 kilo cycles around the central frequency of such a filter, you can do this test and surely get a very, very good insight in how um, big the bandwidth of that filter is. There's also a very interesting other um, thing to tell. And that is you can sharpen the filter very, very substantially by using a capacitor to the filter. And I've used here a capacitor of uh, 47 picofarad. But when you go to 18 picofarad or perhaps 10 picofarad, the filter gets more and more sharp. That means that the bandwidth gets kind of this peak. And with a higher value capacitor you have, say, kind of this peak. All around the central frequency. So, uh, that's a good idea. And I want to stop now to show the schematic. I've done quite a few experiments with such a capacitor to sharpen the filter. And it works very good. Of course, everything has to do with the impedance with which such a filter must be, say, uh, closed, closed off to the next transistor stage. Could be the field effect transistor or a bipolar transistor. So the, the input impedance of the filter here 
and the output impedance of the filter, when they are too low or not properly made in relation to the way the filter was constructed, um, that will surely have an effect on the bandwidth. But anyway, this is a simple uh, circuit that's very good usable when you want to make um, an IF amplifier and test a filter. The next stage will be here. Then I'm going to mount here the second transistor. I'm going to connect here uh, also uh, the second crystal so that at the end in an amplifier unit and after that the AM detector so that we have a very sharp bandwidth um, IF filter. And when you uh, say vary with the capacitor here, or, or make that with a switch on the, on the front of the receiver, you can also set the bandwidth of the IF filter to sharp or less sharp. And sharp is say 3 kHz wide, and less sharp is say x kHz wide, or 10 kHz wide. So, uh, interesting to do. This is for instance a filter on 4, 3, 2 kilocycles. That can also be used in an IF amplifier. And here is the coil that I've used in the test oscillator. The schematic of that test oscillator is on my YouTube channel. And here the whole setup. It's very sloppy. All these wirings I have, say, uh, connected via crocodile clips, <coughs> um, an extra parallel capacitor to bring this uh, um, coil into the right frequency band. The frequency is by the way so low, 455 kilocycles, that you can use this setup with crocodile clips. Of course it's not professional. When you want to do professional measurements, uh, go to another YouTube channel or um, say uh, uh, find on the World Wide Web uh, a setup where this is all done with say coax cables, shielded cables etc etc. But the only idea here is to give say a certain idea uh, about the uh, properties of such a ceramic filter. Anyway. Tune the cap again. Let's look Always very interesting to study the scope, see what happens. Here is the peak where the filter peaks at its maximum. And it uh, surely is uh, exactly on the, on the filter frequency. But of course, the, the, uh, whether it is on the exact filter frequency or not has also to do say with the damping that's given here and here. So here it's connected to the scope. The input uh, impedance from the scope is say um, 1 mega ohm and 30 picofarad. That means that we have here an impedance of 1 mega ohm and 30 picofarad and the impedance here I don't know anyway. But uh, that's always uh, a cause, uh, a good approach when you mount a filter into two amplifier stages, be it low frequency or high frequency or very high frequency. Input and output impedance are always important. Anyway, uh, this shows a good setup for this frequency. So, variating the filter frequency around the central frequency where it works at its best.